Hi and welcome to my channel. I am the designer of BadBobbin.com. You are at my channel it's, um, showing you how some of my designs are made. So today um, I'm also featuring one of the companies that I buy my vinyl from. They are coming out with a new vinyl called, uh, the company is called Dazzle Town Embroidery Vinyl. You can find them on Facebook group and they also um, have a website and their new vinyl is a classy embossed faux leather. So it's really, really pretty, very pliable, very manipulative, usable. It's just really cool. The back side is a little bit like, um, it's got a, a, like a flannel weave on the back. I don't know if you can tell. And here's the texture. I'll show you really close. This is really pretty. And it comes in many colors. I've got the gray. I have the soft blue. It also will be coming in black, white, mint, and lavender. And lavender is really pretty. And we're also featuring on their website, September 1st is when it's debuting. And they're also going to be featuring my design, which is the um, window wallet. So the window wallet is done in two hoopings. I also have a version one. So this will be version two where the pocket's on the outside. The access to the pocket is on the outside with the window. And then there's two pockets on the inside to hold your cards. And I will be showing you today how to make this wallet in this tutorial with their really cool, very pretty, very pliable, uh, classy embossed faux leather. And that's by Dazzle Town Embroidery Vinyl. So I will see you at the cutting table with everything we need for our stitch out of the wallet. All right, here's the materials we're going to need. We have our uh, five by seven hoop with a tear away stabilizer. This is more of a, a, a medium to lighter weight stabilizer. You don't need anything heavy. We have our ruler with our cutters that we're gonna need to get our straight lines. So this is the best thing to do to get those exact straight lines. We have our vinyl pieces that are measured out um, to what's on the sheet that I've printed out. Uh, this is to get more close to your lines. You can go bigger on your vinyl if you're more comfortable. This what measurements that I've given is for um, being right on and not having a lot of waste. So I'm, I'm always into minimal waste. So <laughs> you're getting that with my videos. So I've got um, this really neat vinyl that we're featuring from Dazzle Town Embroidery Vinyl, which I've explained earlier. Uh, it's a really nice pliable, so I kind of, it, we'll see how this turns out. It's a really neat vinyl. So um, I have my outside piece and my inside vinyl. So these two are going to be four and a half by seven and three quarters. So they'll be sandwiched together. Then we have our two pocket pieces, which is the same vinyl that I'm using for my outside with any type of pattern printed, whatever. I use my pockets with the same. You don't have to. You're do it yourself, whichever way you would like to do your wallet. These two are four and a half by two and a half. Then I've got um, my first hooping. So this is a two hooping. This is the version two. And uh, this is my outside pocket that's going to have the window wallet, the window cut out. And it's going to go on the outside. So that this will be our outside fabric. When the wallet's folded, this pocket will be on the outside of the wallet and access will be on the outside. So this is version two with the pocket on the outside and two hoopings. And then, so this pocket um, will be four and a half by three inches. Then we've got our clear piece of vinyl, which I've used 16 gauge. You can use heavier if you'd like or, or thinner. It's up to you what you feel is comfortable. The um, 12, I think, is a, a thick enough piece that's going to uh, stand up and hold up. So the clear vinyl is going to be uh, three and three quarters by two and a half. So this one's a little bit smaller. You don't need a big piece. You don't want too much hanging over. We don't want to sew through a bunch of layers of vinyl. So this will be our first hooping and this will be our second hooping. I have made, and this is optional, you don't have to have the D-ring. You can have the D-ring and uh, lobster claw or you can not have any type of hook on this wallet. It's up to you. So I pre-made mine and folded it over. There's a little bit of, I use just um, stick glue just to hold it temporarily and that stick glue actually held it pretty well and I just clip it together and, ha and have it ready for uh, when I get to that part of the project. Um, my curved four inch scissors, this is the best thing that I've used and found the best to do the cutting out part of the window so that you're not going to cut the vinyl, the clear part, but you can cut, you'll be able to cut really well the 
outside, and I'll be showing that too. So I use my 4-inch um, curved scissors. Lighter, this is for singeing. Uh, people know me for my lighter. And um, my little ruler, this is to set my pockets. So I always have my little ruler. Set of cam snaps and my instructions, and we're all set, ready to go. First hooping I'm going to do, and uh, we'll meet you at the sewing machine. All right, we're at the machine. I have my design in the machine already, and I've actually put two in there because I'm going to utilize the space on my uh, hoop. So I'm actually going to do two front pockets right now. So um, that's what you get to watch me do. Get my stuff situated. We have all our pieces. I'm going to put the hoop in the frame, I mean uh, in the machine, and we're going to sew out the first step which is going to be our guideline of the pocket and then there'll be the placement line for the window. Guidelines. So what we're going to do now is right in that guideline we're going to place our clear vinyl and we can tape it. You don't want to go too far um, like why the guidelines there up to that other stitch line because that's where we're going to place our um, other piece of vinyl right at that line. So we want to uh, put our clear right inside that one line and then center it. window down. Alright, and now we're going to place our pieces on top. Move the tape. Oh, I haven't made one in a while. <laughs> And now we're going to make sure we center it on those guidelines. And make sure we have enough at the top because we're going to have um, our guideline is actually going to, or our uh, hemline is going to come across the top and then we're going to cut towards it. So we want to make sure we have enough up towards the top. And same thing, we're going to tape it down. And with directional vinyl, the way the pocket is going to run is the same way we're going to have the outside of our vinyl. So I know my window and where it goes is going to be uh, facing upwards this way. I'm back in the machine and stitch out our next uh, two things will be around the window and our hemline. Mm -hmm. 
And we have it complete. This is our outside pocket for version two. I'm going to go to the cutting table and show you how I'm going to cut out my top line and how close I get for the pocket. And then we'll set this aside, come back, and do our main uh, wallet. Be right back. All right. We have done our first hooping, which is the outside window. Okay, I've got my scissors. We're gonna, you know, clip some of the threads so they're not hanging in the window area. Sometimes we get that little beginning and end little bird's nest there, but we can clip that away and then uh, I use the lighter to clean it up a little bit. That's what we call that. Take my lighter, just kind of a little bit just to get the threads to, you know, curl up and go away. Tuck, tucked away on that one. If you don't want that much of the, um, the stitching, you can skip the one step if you want that tacks down the vinyl, the clear, and just go ahead and carefully place your other vinyl on top, and then just watch where you put your tape so that when it stitches, it won't. Uh, so you can always avoid that step if you want to have less stitching. All right. So when I do my cutting, this I call the hemline. This is what I'm calling the hemline. This is going to be your exposed side. Everything else is going to be stitched. Um, around on the wallet. Um, this will be the open side, which is where we're going to be putting our pocket, or I mean our, our ID or whatever we have that we want to come through the window. So I, um, how I have it measured is that one eighth or less. If you want to get closer and make it less. I actually take um, on my ruler, we'll see how it focuses, sorry. Um, on my ruler, I have my markings at 1 8 and you can see the dotted line. If I get too close, it might not. There we go. So uh, the dotted line, this is my 1 8 I'm going to put that dotted line on the, ins uh, on the inside. I call it the inside, the, the side that I'm not going to cut, um, the good side. So that dotted line is just going to, just a hair onto the uh, inside of that stitch line. And that'll give me a nice straight cut, a uh, nice straight line. There we go. And that's how, uh, you know, nice straight, right, really close to it. That's going to be a perfect straight. And then we're going to line it up really good once we get it onto the wallet. So I'm going to uh, cut the inside out now. And how I do that is I, um, I have the pointed, nice four inch uh, curved. And I'm going to start at one corner and just just work a little bit in. You don't want to go too far because you don't want to cut through your clear. I hope that's not getting out of focus, but yeah, see the tip just there and it's between my vinyl clear and my other uh, vinyl. So I'm just going to get close and this one here you're going to just start out with one little snip. I hate doing snips, you know that. So I'm going to be really close to the line and then once I can get my scissors in there comfortably, then I'm going to do some nice, just short, running them along the side of the window, just like I did on the ID holder. And then this is where I'm going to actually line the tip up where I need in the corner and do a nice, crisp, clean cut. Then I'll bring the scissors back in and go right up against that where I was, and then start my cutting again. And just, just as long as I'm keeping my vinyl up into the scissors as I cut, and I'm pushing it in, I'm, I'm keeping nice, unjagged you know, edges. They'll be nice and straight. When I get to the tip, I can cut. See how nice it's, it's, it's straight, nice, no jagged edges. Take your time if you need to.
that might be cool. If you don't want anyone to get your information, but it's got to be flapping, so. Kind of like maybe an ID or a luggage tag. It's an idea. I just brought up another idea for myself. All right. Coming soon. Cover on a luggage tag. Right at the tip, see? Everything's nice, straight, no jagged edges, perfect. If you ever see loops or uh, fuzziness, you can always just really quick just take a lighter to it. It helps shrink down, get rid of the fuzzies, get rid of any of the you know tearaway stabilizer that might be sticking out. And there we go. That's our first outside pocket. It'll go this way. This will be the way we can put in our ID or any type of card we want. So I'm going to cut out the next one and then head back to the sewing machine. Sorry, embroidery machine, and we're going to sew out the rest of the wallet. Alright, we're on hoop number two, or the second hooping. So this will be our main wallet and everything will be coming together in this, this uh, portion. So we have our uh, 5x7 again, uh, new piece of stabilizer. So it is a medium to lighter weight um, tearaway. Must be a tearaway. Alright, I'm going to put it in. My first stitch out. Sorry. I always have this on the bottom so I know how to put it back in. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, my first stitch is going to be the placement line for uh, our clip. Uh, it's up to you how far you want to put this. I maybe about quarter to a half an inch um, sticking out past my line. And that's where I'm going to tape it down. Uh, this tape will stay here throughout so that the uh, hardware won't get in the way or flip. So I, I tape it down pretty good up towards the top. Have the rest hanging down. Once it gets sewn in, I'm going to cut um, a portion of this off. Not 100%, but I'm going to cut some of it off and I'll show you why and what. So the next stitch will be to tack that down. Um, you can stop that. So the directions will tell you to take it out and center your top piece and then it's going to sew it down and tack it and the next piece you're going to lay on the bottom. You can, it's up to you if you want to follow the directions and I'm going to do it as the directions but you can also, if you don't need, a, um, uh, if you need a placement line then go ahead and sew out the next one to be your placement line and then you're going to put the top and bottom piece together at the same time for the next stitch out. So um, I'll get, when I do that, I'll explain more to it. So once this is stitched down, I'm going to cut so that it's not so bulky. Uh, I'm, I'm cutting a little bit off, depending on how big you make yours. And then I'm going to cut a little bit off the top part so that, it's, so that it graduates down. So it's not one big lumpy stump of, of fabric here underneath. It graduates down, so it takes the bulk out of it. So in the written directions, it tells you to take your top piece and to center it. I am kind of that type of person to not, that's probably why I did it this way, is to not have extra sewing if you don't need it. I, I can guide things. I have guidelines, which everything, everybody's hoops, I'm pretty sure have guidelines. So the piece that we cut is big enough that can center and you're not going to miss anything. So your, your guidelines on here, we're going to center. And there. So 
Uh, with this one, I'm going to go ahead and spray uh, tacky spray. If you want, you can just tape it. This is the tacky spray I use, not affiliated with them, but it's just a good spray that I use or I use the drips. I have a little spray booth down there, so we're good. We're going to center it. Or like I said, you can run that first stitch and it can be your um, guide stitch. So according to the, I'm going to do it as for the written directions so that everyone will be on the same page. Put it back in, sew it out. my lighter and I just kind of get rid of those. I think I'm going to end up uh, updating this pattern. <laughs> this is one of my first patterns so I'm probably going to update this pattern. So you look, out, look out for the update on this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my next piece on. You can either tape it or use the spray. I use the spray. And center it over the guidelines. This one's a little easier. Flip it over, press it down so it stays good. Make sure it's there. And it's there, it's tacked down. My spray kept it in place. So we're all good. Pop it back in. It's going to tack down my back piece or inside piece of the wall. do is um, we're going to tack down our outside pocket. So if you cut this properly at our top line here and a nice straight at 1 8 everything should line up perfectly. I know it says 1 8 to 1 quarter but you prefer 1 8 on this part and everything else will line up really good. So uh, here's the center line of the wallet. This was for measurement and also it helps the wallet and the inside fabric fold nicely. That's why there's a center line. All right, so what I'm going to do is measure from the center line down towards the uh, our snap tab portion, our part. So according to the directions, just like it says, follow along exactly how it goes. Um, this is the side that we're going to have our window wallet on, or the window pocket. So from that center line, we're going to measure one eighth down. So that's why I have my little ruler here, and I've got one eighth on it, and it's at the line, and this piece will bud right up against my ruler. And if you've done your top stitching and have enough on each side, where the lines end on your hem is where you're going to line those lines up on the edge of the wallet. So you'll butt it right up against your ruler at three eighths, and each side is going to be perfectly this one missed a stitch, but I can see where my last hole was. And that's centering it right in the middle. Perfect. So this one, we're actually going to tape down our sides. I'm sorry. Nope. Don't tape down your sides. It's going to sew down your sides. We're going to tape at the top and the bottom of our window. Okay. So what it's going to do now is do a tack down stitch on each side to tack this down. got our pocket tacked down, which is no problem. Don't worry about how far it tacked or anything. It's just to hold the window there. It's going to do a final stitch around everything. So our next thing to do is we're going to tack, turn it over, 
We want to clean up our little stitches here if you want. I'm going to clean mine up a little bit first before it does the next stitching over it. So I just cut them off. So on our, our uh, pocket pieces, we want to make sure we have one edge that's really perfectly straight, even, everything. Uh, sometimes when we're cutting, it has a little bit of a fuzz. You can always, depending on the bottom, what this one happens to have, uh, be a little bit fuzzy on the bottom, like a felt a little bit. So I'm just going to run the lighter really quick along that edge, which gets rid of the fuzz off of the edge and kind of seals it. Little tips. All right, this one here we're from our center line. This is the back of the hoop, our back piece. This is the inside of our wallet. This was our outside with our pocket. So the inside of the wallet, we have our center line. From that center line, depending on your hoop, which way it goes, top and bottom, right and left, uh, we're gonna center it. And from the center line out, it measures 5 eighths of an inch. So we're gonna center it even sides and measured down 5 eighths of an inch and here we're going to tape. So carefully on the edge, you don't want to go too far in because I don't like stitching going through the tape. Some people don't mind picking tape out. I don't want to pick tape out. So I'm just getting really close to my edge. Like I said, you can cut your vinyl larger. I'm right at the minimum on my vinyl. What's important though is your measuring lines is what you really need to make sure you're, you're right on with. And then my next one. Cut my straight edge. And then depending on how big, if you want your, your pockets this deep also as well. Some may want their pockets shorter so the cards stick out higher. Some, you know, less vinyl, don't want to use as much vinyl. And, sorry, my ruler moved. it over really quick. Oh, sorry. This is where I had my tag. People ask about this. I promise I'm getting you a video. I've started the video, started, but I haven't finished the other part of the actual printing, but I will definitely have a video on how I make these tags. So depending on if you're directional or not, which side might be your, your top or bottom, or you know, if you have directional vinyl, I place it right inside the pocket line. I'm going to actually flip it up. So I tuck it down in. Don't want to go too far because you want them to be able to see your label if they need to get in there. You want to make sure it's going to be right up, upright, so they can read it when they need to. Right inside the pocket underneath. There we go. I tuck that down. Flip it over real quick and then I'm going to push on those edges where the tape is underneath just to make sure that it's secure underneath while it moves on the table center. I know I've got tape. This is coming through very nice. I like that vinyl. It's very pretty. All right, and I'm going to put it back in. Lift up. Make sure everything didn't, sh nothing shifted or moved underneath your um, hoop. That's why I always lift it up. Double check, making sure everything's there. And we're going to do our final stitch out. Before we do anything, we always flip it over, make sure nothing flipped up, nothing moved, make sure everything is right, we're good, yes. Nothing twisted, turned, shifted, we're good. Here's our nice pockets, beautiful. And our front, beautiful. Take off our tape, everything. I'm gonna head over back to the cutting table, meet you there. All right, 
We are finished on the sewing machine. We're going to pop out. I already took the tape off. I'm going to do some trimming and tear away the sterilizer. Right. Now I'm going to do the cutting. So on my straight edges, um, at least on the two, two straight edges, I'm going to um, work from the top side or the front of our wallet. And uh, I'm going to use my straight rule and my rotary for this part. And I always um, am on my one eighth line is right on my stitching or right, uh, the line is just to the inside of my project from the stitch line. And hold the cutter straight up and down to get nice straight lines. This is the tricky part. You don't want to cut through that ring. So I have had enough practice of, of working with D-rings and I just kind of get just just close to it. You don't want to get too close. And then I go and off to the next side. And that gives me my straight line. So when I go to cut with my scissors, I'll know where to go from one end to the other. And then the rest of this I'm going to hand cut. All right. um, if you want, you can uh, pre-cut this or you'll know your measurements once you start making more wallets if you're going to make more. Um, you can always cut this lower. You'll know how to pre-cut this ahead of time um, by hand before you actually put it on your, you know, wallet before you sew it. So just as you start going, you'll find your own little tips and tricks on where you can uh, save time, save things like that. I'm now going to cut this part with my scissors. So what I do, um, you got to kind of maneuver it in your hand and you're going to pull back the ring because we're going to do the one side first. So we want to pull back the ring and hold it. And we're cutting actually on the inside so that we don't cut <clears throat> our D-ring loop. A little tricky, but practice. And you're just going to guide your scissors from one end to the other. And if you line them up right, you'll see where your, your line is right here that you're going to end up at. One cut. There we go. Straight across. This one had a little bit of a jag there. And then we'll do the same to the other side as well. We're going to hold the D-ring down, pull it down, and then we have one piece to go. And we'll make that straight cut from one end to the other. There we go. That's how we do where the D-ring area is. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll make our corners round. So we're going to go just move the project to make a round corner. Sometimes vinyl's forgiving, sometimes it's not. It's like one cut and that's it. You're not going to be able to get it any nicer after you try to cut it again. And we'll go ahead and cut the rest of this. And we're cutting through four layers of vinyl. So it might be a little tough, but you can work through it. Hold it in your hand. I folded it up so that I can get a good grip on it. And I'll start with my curve on the corners and come across and get right to that corner. I want to get right into it and turn. down, 
and kind of kind of guide what you've cut here, how much to what you're going to uh, grab on the other side. And a nice little curve on the corner. Perfect. And then we have this little piece left over. You're going to pull your tab back. Same thing. We pull the tab back. And we have cut straight across. There we go. So that's how we cut it out. We're all good. Everything looks nice. We've, oh, we have the inside. Sorry. <laughs> we have the inside to do. Almost missed that. Same thing, one side to the other, nice cut. A little bit of a curve, so we we'll just practice on that. We all make mistakes, but not me. I like to be perfect, so. I'm gonna cut it better. There we go. We'll fold it, make sure everything's good, nice. And our tab's going to go over. We're actually going to attach it inside, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and attach the tab first of our awl. And you don't want to be right up near the tip. You want some area so that you can, you know, grab a little bit on your tab. So I, I move it down a little bit, right in the center. And we're going to attach the first one, put it in, make sure it's seated really well in there. And then this is where I'm going to, before I actually put the um, male part or the stud, we call it the stud or the male, before we put that part on here, I'm going to fold the wallet and I'm not going to go really tight because you want to give a little wiggle room so when you start adding cards that... Um, you'll have some room to snap it closed. So we want to give, just a you know, pull it back a little bit and give it a little bit of wiggle room. We're going to be really close to this stitch line and I'll show you when we get, when we get uh, to that part. So what I'm going to do is fold it over a little bit and I'm going to push just to give it where I know uh, where I want to put it. And I don't want it too close to the stitching as well. you got to remember we're going to end up putting this inside the pocket so you're going to be right on that stitch line so we're perfect right there we don't want to go through so you want to put your hand in there and be careful we're going to just gently guide our all to make that hole some vinyls are forgiving some are not this is a very pliable one so it's a really nice one to work with and don't forget where we got this vinyl dazzle town embroidery vinyl this is called the Classy Embossed Faux Leather. Comes in a variety of colors, black, white, gray, mint, lavender, and this is the soft blue. I really like this, and it's very like it's soft to work with too. So um, we'll make our hole, and we're only going through the front. It's up to you if you want to put it through there. You're just going to have that room that you need to put your cards, and you're going to be hitting that. So this is how I do it inside. And you're just going to gently, even with other printed vinyls, you'll gently just kind of fold a little bit to get it there. And then what I'm going to do is pull that out, and I'm going to put my uh, cap, we call this part the cap, I'm going to work it in to the pocket, find the hole, and bring it back out the other side. So that's where I'm not on the outside, it's on the inside of my pocket, comes out, and then I've got this one. So I have um, the press. So I'm going to use the press on the tab right now, and that'll get my stud. I always use the female or the, um, what do they call that? I know this is the stud or the male. This is the female and the, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll look that up or put it in the comments if you want. Um, I'll put the stud on first. Sorry, I have a table press which is to the side on a, on a stool, so I'll probably show that one time. And I know in one of my videos I think I show it. So, we have a thread I'm getting rid of. Alrighty, and then I've got this. I, I probably, 
I probably can get this in the press if I maneuver it right, but I'm going to show you with the hand press how I maneuver it in there. So I hang on to the two. I put my hands inside, put my finger inside. I'm going to move my vinyl like this. So basically, we're like this. We're going to push it down. So I've got the cap inside, holding it with my finger, and I have the button part here. So I'm going to wedge my wallet into the hand press, and I'm going to try to, and I'm going to seat the cap. Make sure it's seated right where it needs to be. You can feel it drop in. Pull your vinyl back so you don't ruin your vinyl, and you have the press. And we're going to press. I need to use the edge of the table because my wrists don't work, so I'm going to press down and give it a nice press. It looks good. We're all set. Straighten it back up. This is a really nice vinyl to work with. I like it. Not plugging it. I don't get any money or anything from it. We're actually featuring my wallet and featuring their vinyl. Um, I do buy everything from them, so I do buy vinyl from many different vinyl company so uh, we just happen to be featuring their new vinyl and my wallet pattern so it snaps everything's good it turned out very well there we go and you would think I would have a card ready to put in there open we have cards for here that button is inside so I still have my full pocket for my cards so it looks pretty nice so I have, um, I have some gift cards, just random. I'm going to show you how everything fits. There's plenty of room in here for actually more than just your ID. It, below the lines so that it's not going to be sticking up or fall out. Gives it a little bit of, uh, you know, shake it really good. Make sure that it's going to stay in there. It's going all over. It's, it's pretty sturdy. It's pretty good in there. So you can put your ID in there. Cards fit in here. You can put plenty of cards in here. Just hit, misses that button. So the cards work great. There's enough room for multiple cards. I know some people carry a lot. I carry a lot of different cards. And that's it. Beautiful. I think this final is very nice. So head on over to Dazzle Town um, September 1st. Remember, it's going to be their debut for this, so you got to wait till September 1st. And it's called Classy Embossed Faux Leather from Dazzle Town Embroidery Vinyl. The design for the wallet is from me, which I am badbobbin.com, and there you can purchase the uh, design for this. This is version two of the window wallet, which the pocket is on the outside for the ID, so it's in two hoopings as well. And thanks for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell, you'll get more uh, notifications when I come out with new videos and uh, any comments anything you'd like to see me do tips and tricks questions bring them on to me right down below I will go ahead and answer them all and um, hopefully see you at the website to buy that and head on over to get this nice really beautiful vinyl so see you at the cutting table